Matthew learns a lesson. Matthew was a sensible boy. He always kept his room tidy and had a natural literary aptitude. One day, he hoped to have a career in journalism. The adolescent spent much of his time reading and liked having privacy. But his quiet personality hindered his ability to make friends. One day, Matthew went to the pharmacy to pick up some pills for his grandmother. He saw some boys leaning against a pole outside. One of the boys complimented Matthew. I like your jacket. Another boy asked, Do you want to go to Nate's restaurant? Sure, Matthew said. The boys walked to the restaurant. They were going to have slices of pizza. They ordered their food and drank soda with straws. They ate until their bellies swelled up. Matthew was having so much fun. One of the boys said, Let's leave without paying. Matthew didn't want to, but he presumed his new friends wouldn't like him if he didn't. Suddenly the waiter yelled, Stop! The two other boys ran, leaving Matthew there alone. Soon the police arrived. Leaving without paying for your meal is the same as stealing, said the police officer. The restaurant wants justice. So next week you have to go to court and let a jury decide your punishment. When he went to court, the judge asked, Do you have anything to say, Matthew? He said, I feel sorrow for what I've done. Now I know that real friends won't ask you to do something illegal. The jury then let him have his liberty, but they made Matthew pick up trash as punishment. Much to Matthew's surprise, he ended up meeting some new friends. The Magic Cup Paul and John were brothers. They fought all the time because they both wanted to be leaders of the agency they both worked at. There was a superstition in their town about a magic cup. People said the cup was in a volcano located far away. Anyone who retrieved the cup would have their wish come true. John and Paul both wanted to find it. Then they could become the leader. They both left to find the cup. Before their trip, their mother said they should work together. They dismissed that idea. Even though their trips originated from the same house, each wanted to travel alone. They were both miserable during the trip. They had to navigate small boats across shallow rivers and climb difficult slopes. Their journey spanned many days. When they finally got close to the volcano, the ground began to vibrate and the volcano erupted. Ash filled the sky and lava covered everything. John climbed to the top of a hill to keep from getting burned. A few moments later, his brother went up the same hill. They were confined to the hill until the lava cooled down. They talked about the things they had seen while wandering around the country. They felt more sympathy and affection for each other than ever before. They decided that fate had brought them together. The next day they left to finish the remainder of the trip together. Everything seemed much easier. When they finally found the cup, they learned that it didn't make wishes come true. It was only an ordinary cup. But the trip to reach the cup taught them to work together and love each other. The Knight's Plan A town was fighting for their independence from another country. Several rebels started a revolution. However, they were afraid of an invasion from a lot of troops. They didn't have enough warriors to stop them, so they asked a knight for help. The knight made a plan. A tall mountain was outside the town. The road near the top was very narrow. Cliffs rose on both sides of it. We must trick the enemy. They have to follow us up the mountain, the knight explained. On the narrow path, only a few can attack us at one time. The people agreed with the knight's plan. The knight put on his armor, and the warriors got their spears. When the enemy attacked, the knight and warriors acted as if they were afraid. They quickly withdrew toward the mountain. The enemy troops followed them up the steep path. Soon the enemy became tired. At the summit, the knight and his troops stopped. The enemy was close behind them, but now they were tired. Also, only a few could attack because the path was narrow. The knight and the warriors fought the enemy. 
But there were too many troops. The knight was afraid. If the warriors yielded the path to the enemy, the town would be lost. A storm suddenly came over the mountain. There was strong wind and rain. Thunder boomed. Lightning struck some trees near the enemy. The trees blazed. The flames scared the enemy, and they retreated. They ran down the mountain, out of the town, and never returned. The knight explained, With a little luck, a good plan beats even a big army. The Magic Pear Tree It was a cool morning, and the grass was covered in mist. The market was full of people. A mean farmer named Jack yelled, Pears for sale! He sat on a bench, plotting how he could trick people. Then an orphan came to his cart. Can you spare a pear? she asked. Jack felt rage. He replied, You don't have any money! Please, I haven't had supper in days. No! shouted the farmer. The orphan sighed. However, a pregnant lady heard the dispute and confronted Jack. Just give her a pear, she said. Jack had no shame and said no. Finally, a man bought a pear for the girl. The girl quickly ate it, but she saved the seed. She wanted to get revenge. She told Jack, I know a way to get hundreds of pears in one day. I'll show you how. He watched the girl dig a hole. She dropped the seed into the ground. Then she spread the dirt over it. Watch closely, she said. In a few minutes, a stem will grow. It'll turn into a tree that's full of pears. Jack stared at the dirt, but nothing happened. The only objects there were a few daisies. He looked for the girl, but she had snuck away. Then he looked at his cart in horror. It was empty. He suddenly realized that the orphan had tricked him. While Jack was waiting for the tree to grow, the people had taken the pears from his cart. They all laughed while they were eating the tender fruit. The farmer felt ashamed. The incident taught him to be kinder. Little Wolf and Mother Wolf Mother Wolf was a magnificent animal. She had all the traits of a terrific hunter. She was very strong and fast. She knew how to hide and how to seize prey. Mother Wolf was the forest's supreme creature. Her skills were evident to all the other animals. Mother Wolf lived in a den beneath a tree with her cub, Little Wolf. At dawn, Little Wolf and Mother Wolf were eating breakfast. Little Wolf looked sad. Mother Wolf said, What is wrong, my cub? Little Wolf said, I want to be big like you. You can run and leap better than anyone. You can howl so loudly. Being big is a necessity, and I am so small, Mother Wolf said. Don't be dissatisfied with your size. Being small can be very helpful sometimes. Just then, rain and hail began to fall. The tree was hit by lightning. It fell on the wolf's den. Little Wolf was scared. The wolves knew that escaping the den was vital. Mother Wolf said, Little Wolf, I cannot move the heavy pile of branches. But you can escape with ease. You can get out and find help. Little Wolf crawled out of the den and called all the large animals for help. They went to the den and pulled away the branches.